Hello, welcome, and thank you all for joining us this afternoon, or if you're outside of the Eastern Time Zone this morning, for today's IWF Reads Author Chat. I'm Hadley Heath Manning, Policy Director at Independent Women's Forum, and I'm so glad to join all of you today. I'm honored to host today's chat with Independent Women's Forum's 2014 Woman of Valor Award recipient, best-selling author, and the first female senator from the great state of Tennessee, Senator Marsha Blackburn. She's out with a brand new book. Here it is, The Mind of a Conservative Woman Seeking the Best for Family and Country. And we're going to dive into that book today. It's a super timely read as conservatives just broke records and have more than doubled the number of women elected in the House and Senate. I think we're now up to 17 or 18 new Republican members of Congress. That's really impressive and groundbreaking. So if you're new to IWF Reads events, we're so glad you found us. First, I want to go over a few logistical uh, notes and, and notes for you to engage with us today through our live stream virtual event platform. First of all, we have a chat room on the right side of your screen. If you don't see that chat room, you can select the arrow in the top right corner of your screen to open that chat window. You can join in on the discussion with our other attendees and my fellow IWF teammates. Hi, guys. You can see who the IWF team members are in the chat room because they will have a T right after their name. And we'll keep an eye on your comments. Uh, second note, Senator Blackburn will join us in just a few moments. And I want to be sure that she hears from all of you. So next to the chat room tab, there is a questions tab. If you have a question for the senator, please post it in the questions tab. We want to ensure that we see your questions and this is the best place to post it. If you have um, uh, if you like someone else's question, you can give a bump by hitting the up arrow and that'll help my IWF teammate uh, teammates find those questions faster. And then finally, towards the end of our time with Senator Blackburn today, we will be drawing and announcing names for door prizes, three signed copies of the senator's brand new book, The Mind of a Conservative Woman. In order to win, you must be present at the drawing at the end of today's event. And the books will be mailed to our door prize winners. So that should cover the logistic notes for our event today. Now, without further ado, it's time to welcome our special guest. Please join me in welcoming Senator Marsha Blackburn. Thanks, Hadley. I'm delighted to be with you and with IWF. I appreciate so much all of the great work that you all do and just so pleased to join you today. Oh, well, we're just honored to have you with us, Senator. I have a few questions for you about your book, so let's, sure. let's dive right in. Uh, earlier, uh, before you joined us, I mentioned the electoral success of so many conservative women candidates this year. But nationally, more women continue to vote with Democrats, and this creates what is sometimes referred to as a political gender gap. In your book, you describe how the political left really developed a strategy to do this, to appeal to women and depict conservatives as waging a so-called war on women. So my question for you is, what ways do you think that conservatives have successfully responded and pushed back on this false narrative? And in what ways do you think we, we still have, uh, we, we still need to do better? Well, Hadley, I have to tell you, I say conservative women have a titanium backbone. And that's because we are constantly pushed back against by the mainstream media and by the left. And what we have seen happen is that as the left continues to push for intellectual isolation, as I call it, you either adopt the agenda the left has for women or they look at you and say, we don't want to hear from you. If you're pro-life, pro-religion, pro-family, pro-business, pro-military, that is not something they want to talk about. So women finally have listened to this to the point that they're saying, oh, no, wait a minute. That's not what I believe. I want somebody who is going to abide by the rule of law and respect the Constitution and believe in fairness and equality and justice and opportunity for all. And this year, we saw very brave, well-spoken, solid conservative women step up, put their name on the ballot. And whether it was at the local, state, or the federal level in those House elections, they have succeeded in these races, and I just love it. I love their spirit. I love the fact that um, Maria Elvira Salazar down in Miami, when she won, she just looked at the camera and said, I will not be silenced. And that's the kind of bravery that we're seeing from so many of these women. 
It's really amazing how it's not just the message that is important, but often we find at IWF, it's also the messenger who is important. So I love that titanium background <laughs> backbone. That's so great. I see a lot of people chiming in in our chat window. Also, I want to remind people if you have a question, you can submit it in the questions tab. I'll take advantage of this opportunity to ask one more question from me. And this is maybe a funny question. In your book, you make it pretty clear how the mind of a conservative woman is different from say a more progressive or a liberal person, but how would you say that the mind of a conservative woman is different from the mind of a conservative man? Or would you say that it is? And I don't wanna get you in trouble with your male <laughs> colleagues there in the Senate, but, <laughs> but how would you say our minds are different? Well, I would tell you, I think there's a couple of points there. First of all, when it comes to being different from liberal women, uh, conservatives are free thinkers. They're independent minded and they're not someone who is going to submit to the leftist agenda or to anybody's agenda. Uh, you've got conservative women who will say, no, this is what is going to be best for my family, for their future. And they make a decision. When it comes to being different from men, I think that conservative women have a much more diverse background. They have a very circuitous route that they travel through their careers. They take time off for children, maybe to care for an elderly relative. Sometimes they're working in a corporate environment, sometimes a small business environment. We know the fastest growing sector of small businesses are female owned small businesses. So they bring a greater diversity. I also think the other thing that is a notable difference is that women, conservative women specifically, have a, 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 a tendency to think more long-term. They don't think about the next few weeks necessarily when they're looking at a policy issue, they think, what is this going to mean to their children when their children are 10, 20, 30 years older? And I will tell you many times when it comes to talking about our nation's finances and our nation's debt, I hear that very thing from women. They're concerned that of how this will affect their children. Well, I think that long-term view is so important. And certainly after reading your book, I can say you have brought a host of life experiences to your perspective in Washington, D.C. So we thank you for your leadership there. We've got some great questions from audience members that I want to get to. Um, Donna Gornick asks, uh, she says, yes, titanium backbone, but there is strength in numbers. So how do we get more numbers of conservative women? And we also have a question from Emily Raymond. What advice do you have for women interested in running for office? So maybe we can kind of combine these questions and ask, how do we get more conservative women, you know, in general and also in public office and, and having that seat at the table? Yes. And those are great questions. And I will tell you, I, I do think titanium backbones is the right description for for this. And as far as increasing our numbers and having people speak up, uh, you know, I, I talked to a young lady the other day and they were talking about how Hillary Clinton had classified conservative women as the vast right wing conspiracy. And this young woman said, you know, maybe we are that vast right wing conspiracy 2.0 because they look at what is happening with public policy uh, from the left, the squad and all that group. And they're saying for our children, we have to push back and preserve the opportunity to have the American dream. When it comes to more women in public office, I want to challenge everybody that is on this call today raise your hand and volunteer. Talk to your county mayor or your city mayor. Get on a commission or a board. Find a way to be in public service of some type. And then when there's an opportunity to run, when it fits your life and there's an opportunity to run on a city council or a state rep or a state senator, or a congressional seat or a U.S. Senate seat, raise your hand and run. And then it is up to those of us 
to make certain you have the resources and the support that you need to run. And this is one of the areas where I really appreciate IWF and the work that they do on policy issues. Look at the work you've done on addressing health care. Look at the work that you've done to put new ideas on the table to cause people to think there is a way to solve these problems. So it's being brave, raising your hand, getting in the mix. It is saying, I will run. It is up to others to say, I will help support. And we will do work to make certain you have the resources to be successful in this run. And the other thing I would add to that is amplifying through your own personal social media and your network what these women are doing. I say that right now the most important name in news is not ABC or NBC or CBS or CNN or Fox. It is the Y-O-U. It is you and your circle of friends amplifying our voices, saying, look at this. Here is something that Senator Blackburn or Senator Ernst or Congresswoman Cheney has put out and get people following and reading and learning about the work we're doing. I love that. It makes such a difference when you say, hey, you know, I don't really agree with that. You might be surrounded by people in a room who disagree with you, but it really makes a difference when conservative women stand up and speak out. And I also appreciate the shout out to Independent Women's Forum and our policy work. I really appreciate that. We have a few questions in the chat window that are related to another theme. And this is something I wanted to ask you about because like you, I'm a huge admirer of Margaret Thatcher. And I loved the part of your book um, where you described her as a personal hero, what she meant to you. And one piece of it, when Oxford denied Thatcher an honorary doctorate, reminded me of actually how Justice Amy Coney Barrett was treated recently by her alma mater, Rhodes College, and her sorority, Kappa Delta. They were acting like they were embarrassed of her, you know? And we at IWF have a nickname for this phenomenon where conservatives face a double standard in the culture. We call it progressive privilege. Laura Carno has asked a question in the questions tab. She said, how can we encourage fair media coverage of Republican women versus Democrat women? She's thinking of the coverage of the first ladies and the lack of coverage of this, you know, the historic wins of Republican women this cycle. What can we do about progressive privilege and cancel culture and the pressure that conservative women feel to just shut up and go away? How can we fight back? Well, and this is one of those things where we have to act in mass on this. We have to show up and these magazines that refuse to elevate conservative women, write in, do those letters to the editor, write into these publications and say what you're doing is not right. Because how has the left pushed their agenda? They got women to challenge these companies, to challenge these publications and to elevate the message of a liberal mindset. So now in what I call the era of conservative women, it is up to us to challenge them yet again, to say, no, what you're doing is not right. And yes, we are going to challenge you and to be vocal about it, not to be rude, not to be aggressive, but to be appropriate in pointing it out and be persistent and pointing out the inequity that is that is there. The way some media outlets think they can talk to a conservative woman and will just really almost dress them down as they're asking a question, but then they will treat a liberal with kid gloves. Yeah, I loved so many of the Southernisms in your book and the good, solid Southern advice. It reminds me, you know, some of the media treatment of conservative women reminds me of the question, when did you stop beating your wife? You know, the presumption is in the question that you're already on the wrong team and you're fighting for the wrong values. So I think it's so important that we 
fight back and, and sort of dispel those misperceptions right away. And you do an excellent job of this. You're so brave when you go into some of these media environments, especially the ones that we know are going to be hostile, right? Well, we have, but a you have to do it. You know, Hadley, it's like the interview I did on The View about this book. We knew it was going to be uh, not a friendly environment, but in order to reach those thousands of women, hundreds of thousands of women that are watching that show who maybe have not heard from a conservative woman, I thought it was important to do. And I will say, I think that Joy was pretty flummoxed when I would not say I was a feminist, but that I, I am a woman who is devoted to my job, to my family, uh, devoted to my community, uh, very active in my faith, and am grateful for those opportunities to weigh in on the life of my family and my friends and uh, my colleagues. Well, and I think it's so important outside of that media setting when we're just talking conversationally with our friends. I think at least maybe this is my experience as a conservative woman is that overwhelmingly I, I feel this desire to be polite and not say things that might upset other people. But I think that there are ways to do that. You know, you can disagree agreeably actually in the book. I wanted to let everybody know in the book, there are some great sort of um, fake conversations, model conversations yes. where a more liberal or progressive woman might bring up a challenge. And then Senator Blackburn has some great suggestions for how to respond uh, when we're talking about political issues with our friends or family members, as many of us may do over the holidays. So it's a really valuable read. I want to get to a couple more questions from our audience members. We have one from Clark Kidd, and this is a tough one. It's it's not so much related to your book, but it's related to a, a news event that I think is very important. And uh, Clark asks, what can we do to create a secure election system in this country? I've, After last month, many of us believe- Hadley, no I've lost, I don't know if you can hear me. I've lost the transmission. Audio? Oh, goodness. Well, we'll see if we can get the Senator back. Senator, can you hear me right now? No. Okay. Um, I, I that's all right. We'll 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 work with the technical side to get the senator back with us if we can. Uh, in the meantime, I imagine some of you in our audience today may be new to IWF Reads or you may not be familiar with Independent Women's Forum. So I want to fill you in a little bit on our work. I know Senator Blackburn mentioned the policy work that we do. I'm our policy director. So of course, I'm proud of that. I'm proud of the team that I get to work with every day. But if you haven't already done this, please join our exclusive Facebook group called IWF Reads Book Club. It's a private group. It's just for our IWF Reads members like you. And it's a great way for us to keep up with our books and events and to engage with other IWF Reads members. So if you found a friend in the chat room today, you can continue that conversation in the IWF Reads Book Club group on Facebook. Independent Women's Forum is the leading national women's organization dedicated to developing and advancing policies that enhance people's freedoms, choices, and well-being. We have an amazing staff of all women. We are, uh, I hope, some of the sharpest policy communications and legal minds in the country. We testify before Congress and state legislatures. We produce educational materials, as Senator Blackburn mentioned, and we publish articles about various policy issues. We find amicus briefs in various court cases, and we frequently interface with the media, even sometimes in hostile environments, to make the case for better public policy. We also make it a point to champion women across the country, celebrating their accomplishments and lives. So if you haven't done so already, I encourage you to read IWF's champion women profiles. I hope you'll check those out on IWF.org. Looks like we may have Senator Blackburn back with us. Can you hear me, Senator? Yes, can I can. Okay. Thank you. Great. I was just plugging IWF's champion women series. And uh, you're, you're certainly one of our champions. You have received our Woman of Valor Award in 2014. We give an annual Woman of Valor Award and in 2014, Senator Blackburn received that. I was just about to ask you a question, Senator Blackburn, from an audience member about our election system. And Clark Kidd asked, what can we do to create a secure election system in the country? After last month, many of us believe there's no integrity left in this great country. And I believe, Unfortunately, we've seen for a long time sort of a declining faith in public institutions, including our government. 
And so I'd be curious how you would respond to that, Senator. One of the things we need to realize is we do not want the federal government to take control of our elections. And in our constitution, setting the rules around elections are left to our state legislatures and then to your local government to implement these. So this is a great area for IWF members in their local communities to volunteer to serve on these election commissions. When my children were small, this is something that I did. And I'm so glad that I did because it is important to have people that are going to say, we have to keep these voter rolls up to date. We can't mail out ballots like their publishers clearing house sweepstakes notices. And if people want to participate, they fill it out and send it back in. That's not the way the one person, one vote works. And it is important to have good people serving on these commissions at the local level that are going to oversee cleaning up these roles, making certain that people who are registered to vote get a ballot. If there is going to be a mail out of ballots, that they are going to people that have requested that ballot. But these policies and procedures at the local level are imperative. Also at the state level, it is imperative to have those good policies and procedures in place so that when votes are certified, people know that that is a true, free, and fair election. Thank you, Senator Blackburn. I think that's so important that we have faith in our institutions and in our elections and our government. And certainly your service in the U.S. Senate is another reason that we can all be, be more confident that our leaders are really serving us. My last question for you does relate to your book. And there was so much in the book that I could relate to. Of course, I don't have the wealth of life experience that you have, but I do have the experience of growing up in a loving home and a loving community, a strong community with faith institutions to support me as I was a girl. And I sort of absorbed conservative values the same way that you did. But these things, strong families and communities, they seem to be more and more rare. And certainly the pandemic has made it harder for people to live in community. What can be done about this? Is there anything that the government can do to rebuild um, this part of American life? Or is this a cultural change that government really can't, can't do? One of the things I think is important to preserve that sense of community is to have people in those communities that want to see those institutions to, to remain and to be prevalent in the life of that community. It is so important to be involved in, um, in our family. We've been so involved in church. Growing up, I was involved in 4-H club. We've been invested and involved in children's schools and now our grandchildren's schools. We've been involved in building a church. My husband and I have been involved in Rotary Club, in Boy Scouts, uh, so many different civic communities that add to the strength. There again, sometimes we get tired. We think we're running after children. We're working. And is there any energy and time left to devote to these institutions? But it is important for us to say this is important to our community life. It is important to the exercise of free speech. It's important to the exercise of freedom of religion. And it is important for us to be involved in helping to give back. And, you know, Hadley, one of the things that, and I wrote about this some in the book, as we were growing up, our parents would always say, give back more than you take and leave things in better shape than you found them. And we should all each day try to do that as we walk through our day, improve the area, encourage the people that are crossing our path and never, never hesitate to do that. 
Well, I know it's been a tough year for so many Americans feeling maybe lonelier or more isolated than usual due to the pandemic, but I sure have to hope that there are brighter days ahead. I do want to share yes. before we before we um, ask the Senator to make any final remarks, I'm happy to share that we have drawn three names of event attendees to win signed copies of the Senator's excellent new book. I just got notice of our winners. They are Yola Yarwood, Don Shields, and Nicole Aronson. So congratulations to those winners. One of my Independent Women's Forum teammates will follow up with the winners and figure out how to get those signed copies of the book to you. And so thank you, Senator. It's been such an honor to have the chance to speak with you today. Do you have any final thoughts that you'd like to share with the IWF audience? I would simply say to everyone, I hope you have a Merry Christmas and a Happy Hanukkah and a wonderful holiday season. And I want to challenge each of you as you do your goals and your resolutions for the new year. Put down that you're going to raise your hand and you're going to volunteer to get involved in our our nations in our community's life in the public sector that you're going to work to make certain that we preserve freedom for all americans that's funny the word volunteer makes me think of tennessee <laughs> it's <laughs> yes, a wonderful it state. Yes, so i hope you have a, a, a wonderful white tennessee christmas thank you so much senator thank blackburn you. bye 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 I really enjoyed that conversation. I hope that you did too. And I hope that you'll enjoy reading Senator Blackburn's book. I recommend it to all of you. Makes a great Christmas gift. As I was reading the book, I found myself thinking, I'm so glad that we have leaders like Senator Blackburn in our government. And I'm proud of the work that we do at Independent Women's Forum and how it so closely aligns with her personal mission that she describes in the book. She says she wants to build a world where every person, she says every child, but I, I believe every person can be what he or she is destined to be. So that's what we're up to at Independent Women's Forum. I mentioned the IWF Reads Book Club. I hope that you'll all join that Facebook group, IWF Reads Book Club. It's a private group. I hope that you'll also visit iwf.org. That's our flagship website. It's an opportunity to sign up to become an email subscriber. You can get new content. You can also sign up to be a mobile insider. And this way you will get special text alerts um, so you can stay up to date on our latest news updates and events from IWF. So those are a few ways that you can get involved with IWF. I hope that you can see uh, maybe a, a pop-up or some way that you can connect with IWF, um, a link that you guys can, can hit subscribe. Uh, thanks to my colleague, Megan, for sharing that with all of you. And with that, it's time for me to adjourn and say goodbye. Thank you so much for joining us, especially to those of you who helped me with some great questions. I hope that you enjoyed it and got some good answers from Senator Blackburn. We hope you have a great week and a safe and healthy holiday season. And we hope to see you all again soon at the next IWF Reads event. Bye. <laughs>